Welcome back everybody to uh, Sig Cougar Build Part 9D and you caught me right in the middle of some prepping. Uh, I'm working on the steerable linkage for the nose gear. I have it clamped right here. It's going to be a straight uh, metal rod going from the retract back to the servo and this clevis right here is a solder on and that's going to be hooked to this little arm right here and uh, I would want that so it's not adjustable. That way once it's on, I don't have to play with it. Everything will be done on the servo arm or in the transmitter adjusting the servo. So uh, I'm just gonna take my well beat up soldering iron here and heat this up and hit it with some solder and I don't think you really need to see me do that. It's kind of kind of a boring thing and heating it up and everything. So give me a couple minutes and in your case, a blink of an eye, I'll be back and it'll be done. Well, the soldering's done. The clevis is on. It's just a, <clears throat> excuse me, a cheap uh, clevis. It's kind of heavy, but it has a little stopper on the rod on the inside of the clevis. So this arm on this side can't collapse all the way through and get tight. And the reason I like that is that when it goes around the yoke right here on the steering arm of the retract it won't get bound up tight against the nylon here because this is this is plastic or a nylon or something and why I don't want it to do that wow here we go is that it needs to slide up and down and when the retract goes up it'll be able to move like that and that's kind of important otherwise when you bring your retract up if the arm is if you're uh, excuse me the clevis is stuck on this arm and doesn't move your retract will cock off to the left or the right and kind of hang up on you and that that'll cause you some problems so that's why I did that enough of the retract get rid of that let's get onto the fuselage and you can see the firewall is stuck on there, but that's temporary. <laughs> uh, I just did that to check the fit and alignment and things, so that's pretty much done. Let's see. We were on, uh, I don't even remember where we were. It's been such a long time. Let me go through this. We, uh, looks like we finished up 37. Let's see, and we haven't done 40 yet. And that is the top blocks, that, the fillets that go on the wing. And like I said before, I have to, well, I had to put in the plate for the nose wheel retract. I have to put on the firewall. And then we have to fit, fit the block and sand the block to shape. And then we can do the fillet. That way we have the complete shape when we get to the wing. So I suppose it is time to uh, epoxy the firewall on and after I do that I have some, let me get rid of these pair of pliers here, some reinforcing triangular stock that go in. I got them marked uh, right and left and they're notched for the blind nuts. Um, little pieces go up in here, the bigger pieces will go inside here firewall goes on there so let's uh, get to it I'm gonna grab some uh, epoxy and be right back well got my handy dandy glue tray here I flipped over my 15 minute I'm gonna use a long set 15 minute on this give me some working time and it also gives time for the epoxy to absorb into the wood a little better than five minute epoxy will five minute will get on there not soak in very far and then poof it's hard so 15 minutes will give me that little extra bit of absorption that I need and that I want to uh, soak into the, the plywood because that that's a lot denser than balsa get that stuck on there and I'll use 15 minutes to uh, put the braces on or the triangular stocks pieces and we'll go from there so let me get this out of the way. 
for a moment. One ounce mixing cup. And our little stir stick here. 50-50 mix. Don't need a whole lot. But I need enough to uh, get the firewall to stick real good. I'm not really sure how much that is I just put in there, but it's definitely enough. Enough to give the bottom a nice coating on the mixing cup. Alright, put these back over, won't need them for a while. Whoa, almost spilt my coffee. That would have been a disaster. All right, get everything out of the way. Make sure everything's gonna fit correctly. Okay, we're good. Mix this stuff up. You could use 30 minute epoxy on this if you'd like. I don't, it just, you have to wait a little longer. It'd probably absorb better than what this will. But I really wouldn't go five minute. I've knocked a bunch of firewalls off of my Cougars because I went with five minute epoxy. Um, hard landing with the nose gear mounted to the firewall has a tendency to rip the firewall off. I guess it's a good thing on a rough landing so you can keep repairing it, but I normally don't have rough landings anymore after, oh goodness, I don't even want to count the years of flying. And if I do, it's a dumb mistake and <laughs> I paid the price. So here we go. I'm going to just uh, goop quite a bit of this on here. I'm hoping I mixed enough. The more I look at it, the more it looks like I didn't. We'll see. Get it up here onto the triangular stock. Along the sides. I'm not worried about it oozing out and making a mess. I'll just take some denatured alcohol. And wipe it up when I'm done. So that won't be a problem. Okay. Here we go. I guess that's plenty. More than I needed. Way more than I needed. I might be able to even get a couple of pieces of triangular stock stuck in here with it. Okay. That looks pretty good. Move this out of the way. Um, hang this over the edge so I don't goop anything up. Firewall. Getting this dude to line up good is the hard part. It fits in there pretty tight. Help if I had it right side up too, wouldn't it? Oh, it's going to go in. Making sure my backing plate on my firewall, the triangular pieces are up inside against the triangular stock there. I just heard my mixing stick hit the floor. That's not a good sign. I'm going to grab some masking tape and I'm going to masking tape this down after I wipe it off with them, some alcohol. And uh, I'll be back in a second. Now I got my alcohol. Got my little cleanup pad here. Gonna saturate this real good. And I'm gonna wipe up the excess around the edges here. Because there's nothing worse than sand than 5 minute, 30 minute, or 15 minute epoxy. That looks pretty good. 
I'll get some tape so it'll stay on. These numbers here. And this will hold it in place until I'm done with the rest. All right. Okay, I'm going to put one more strip across the top just on the counter because I think it would be a little more stable. Okay, good. Alright, while I'm right here, I may as well put in my triangular stock bracing. This one is the left side. Let me goop that up. I didn't wipe down my little spreader since it hit the floor. It's starting to get thick. I'm going to have to really hurry. That is drying faster than I anticipated. A little there. I'm filling my fingers up with epoxy. <laughs> That's half the fun is getting messy, I suppose. A little bit underneath. Now I'm really in a hurry now. Okay, you can see, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's right up in here, right there. I'm going to squeeze that in after I clean the excess off my fingers because that stuff is really sticky. But it comes right off with the alcohol. That's the beauty of it, I suppose. Okay. All right, shove that down into place really good. My tape is coming loose. Okay. I don't think that's going anywhere, but I'm gonna put a little pressure on it anyways. Grab my clamp container. I got a little coffee can full of clamps here. This guy, I don't know if he's going to go in there or not. Yeah, I guess so. Boy, I put the squeeze to it. Good. That's all it really needs. I'll have to mix up some more to get the other side. And you've seen one side. Um, so, like usual, I'm just going to go ahead and do the other side and I'll be right back. Putting in the last little triangular stock now and it should only take me a moment and then we can press on. Ooh, I can feel that my epoxy's starting to turn on me. It's okay because I got a little bit more time before it does. And I'm just saturating it because nothing really goes down in here. So uh, excess glue is not a problem. Adds a little weight, yeah, but I'm not too worried about that. Got plenty of power underneath the hood here. And there it is. Okay, I'm gonna stick that up in there and give it a good push. 
the other side. Clean up some excess. All right, I'm done. I'm gonna get rid of all this stuff, clean up my uh, spreader, and I'll be back again in a moment. Well, it's been just a little bit more than, I would say, <laughs> 10 hours since I've been working on this, so we'll pick it up where we left off. I took the tape off of the, the firewall, and there it is. Just took it off just a couple seconds ago. I didn't think you needed to see me do that. Took the clamps off and test fitted my cowl onto the firewall just to make sure everything's going to fit. Take that off. And when I test fitted it, I found one thing is that my motor mount was in the way a little bit, so I took it off and I ground it down. Just put it on the sanding um, belt sander and just kind of rounded it off a little bit. Not a big deal. So that puts us back to where we were. Uh, let's see. It's a matter of now of uh, cutting this block. And what I did was I measured this out from F2 to the firewall. Is that F2, F3, whatever it is, F2, okay. To the back plate of the firewall. Marked it onto my piece of balsa. Now I could cut it by going over to my table saw, my little Dremel table saw, and zip that off. And I know a lot of you guys don't have something like that. Um, if you have a miter box, that would be really good and handy. And some of you who might be just getting into building don't have any of this kind of equipment. And you might only have a razor saw. So that's the way I'm going to do it. The way that I used to do it when I first moved away from my dad's workshop and was on my own. That's all I had was one of these. So that's what I'm going to do. So I put this blade right on the line on the corner. And this one cuts on the draw on the on on a back pull and I just follow the line on the sides I marked it on both sides I didn't mark the bottom it's not necessary so I didn't do it and I just carefully follow that line when I get to this side I make sure that I follow both lines best you can if it's not perfect it's not a big deal that's what filler is for but I like cutting it down right to the bottom and the saw will tend to have a tendency to follow uh, the lines that you've already cut so that's what I do both sides And 10 to 1 when I get this cut out, it's not going to be a perfect snug fit, so don't worry about that. And this fairly soft ball, so it cuts through pretty quickly. I'm just doing it kind of slow, just so some of you who uh, aren't experienced at this can follow along a little better. And cutting slow doesn't hurt nothing. Slows you down a little bit, but it uh, ups your accuracy. Just like that. Get rid of this. Bring the piece slide back. Let's see what we got. Might be just a hair tight. And these be cut on an angle, obviously. So what I'm going to do, since it needs to be cut on, it'll be sitting something like this. So this is going to have to be cut. Let me exaggerate the angle a little bit. Instead of straight up and down, it's going to have to be cut this way, a little bit forward. And the top on this side will have to be cut back a little bit. Not a big deal. So we'll just take a sanding block. Uh, this is 80 grit. And we'll just kind of put that little bit of an, a little bit of an angle in there. I might be going too much here. That's what it looks like at least. And a little bit of an angle in the front. Not too much of one. Just 
and we'll see how that works. What do you think? Not too bad. It fits in there tight enough. I might not have to uh, tag glue it, but if, if let's say if your block fits a little sloppy, take your CA glue, just put a couple of dots in four corners, not too close to the formers, but towards the middle. Put your block down on top of it, or you can just shoot it into here, into the corners, or into the edges, like right here and right here. And when you're done sanding, you want to take the block off, then you just put your X-Acto knife or your scalpel in there and just pop the glue joint and it'll come right off. I may have to do that. So, uh, we'll just take a look at this real close before I start. <clears throat> hmm. Let's see. I guess I will try to do it without gluing it. If it moves a little bit, then I'll, I'll tack glue it on. And if you put the cowling on, you can see where, where the angles look. And if you want to curve it a little bit, then you got that chance. But I don't think it's going to be necessary. It's just going to be a straight rounding off of the, the block. So let's get to it. This first part you might want to take down with a knife just to knock the corners down a little bit. You don't want to go too far, but just enough to uh, make it easier to sand. this end angle where you can see just kind of carve it in the best you can you might not want to cut like this <laughs> drawing it towards you because uh, that's how accidents happen but I thought I would tell you that before uh, somebody emails me and complains, but... Alright, that's just knocked down a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish carving this up. Then I'll come back when I start to sand and uh, show you a little bit of that. I had a bit of a video malfunction, so I can't show you the, the sanding of it. Um, it's one of those things where if you don't get it the first time, you're not going to get it. So. But I'll tell you what I did. It's pretty simple. Once I had it carved down to a rough shape, I took it down a little further with some 80 grit, just kind of smoothed it out. Took a bar sander, and this is loaded with uh, 120 grit. Laid it on here, and just started sanding until I was flush with the firewall and F2. You can, you can kind of hear it dragging on the on the two pieces and another thing I did was I put uh, I don't know if you can see that or not but I put a uh, sidewall inside my retract compartment that's just to keep the oil from spreading too far and uh, while it's open I'm going to put some polyester resin in here do it all up make it fuel proof and then I'll have to figure out where this block is going to sit exactly, where the retract is going to be. I'll make a paper template on where I want it to go and I'll tape the template on here. Put the block on, well, I'll tape the template on there and slowly cut it out to the measurements I want for the retract. Then I'll lay it on top, cut out the block. Pretty simple to do. And I believe we are pretty much done with the block. Oh, there's one more thing I wanted to show you. I have to zoom in and uh, show you some gaps that are going to have to be filled 
and not right away but down the road so let, let me zoom in and show you this after you sand it round you're going to notice a spot right here on the firewall where there's a little gap and a spot right back here where there's a gap you might want to put a piece of scrap in there fill it up and then sand it flush uh, or you can wait and use polyester resin and micro balloon to fill it up and that's probably what I'm going to do because I'm going to put on a, a wing fillet like in uh, the video improving your wing saddle and a bunch of guys said that uh, they're, they're not doing a high wing so they'd like to see it done on a low wing so I'm going to do it again I'll show it on this Cougar how it's done it's it's real simple um, if you've seen that video it's it I think it's pretty self-explanatory on how to do it on a low wing but I'm going to do it again anyways and inside here since we're up close I can show you what I've done I laminated some balsa on the inside you can see it back here I'm pointing to the side you can't see obviously but uh, that's all C8 in I reamed out the holes because they were uh, kind of plugged up. Let me see if I can turn this and keep it in the frame at the same time. Oh, wrong way. And you can see the holes here for the wing hold down dowels. I had to open those up a little bit so when I slide them in they're not going to hit. I'll probably take a, a small round file and open them up a little bit more as I go. And I'll tip it up so you can see pretty much the whole compartment here. That's it right there. And there's the plate and the rails, the maple rails. You can see my my circular saw blade was a little bit, uh, or my table saw blade was a little dull by the time I got to this other maple block and kind of burned it, but it's not going to hurt anything. Okay, let's get back to it. You can see I got them wing mounted on. And what we have to do is make the fillets right here. Let me tip that up a little bit. I don't know if you can see that any better. Move it in, move it out, I don't know. But right there is where we got to put the fillets. And if you remember, when we did the wing tip blocks, we had these little scrap pieces left over when we cut them out. Well, these scrap pieces are going to be used to make this fillet. I got two of them, the other one's probably buried under the wing here somewhere. But what I'm going to do is draw out the shape that I want to put in here. And they really don't give you a shape of this particular block, you just kind of eyeball it. I'll take a felt pen and just kind of draw it in like you would think the fillet should look. Something long. Something like that, I suppose. And what we'll do is we'll cut that out. Let me tip that up so you can see that shape. It's the light line, not the dark line, because it'd be backwards. But this line right here, we'll cut that out, glue this thing right in there. Then I'll flip it over and trace it over onto the other one. Let's see if I can find that one. Here it is. Here's the other one. And once you cut them out and put them together and glue them on here, don't really, you don't have to worry too much about the gap. You can probably see that gap. Um, I've been saying this all the way through is that you don't worry about gaps and filling because we'll, we'll take care of it with the polyester resin and micro balloon. Pretty simple stuff. Um, what I'll do is I'll cut one out and glue it on. And I'll show you the other one cut out and then I'll glue that on for you. So give me a moment, I'll cut this out and we'll get on with it. The part's cut out now, you can see the shape. And it's curved, because this is where it was cut off on the wing tip. So the wing tip has the approximate shape of the airfoil, so that block is very close. And that'll lay in there just like that. Somewhere in there. And the other one, it's right there put that in there and how I'm going to trace them out is I'm just flip it over opposite corners 
line them up and I'll take my pencil if I can find it and it has disappeared here it is okay now take my pencil and just trace around it you can either cut this with a knife you can see that it's it, I don't know if you can see it or not but it's on there but you can cut that out with a knife or go over to the jigsaw like I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna zip it out with a jigsaw so give me a second I'm gonna cut this out and lay it up there now it's cut out I laid it up in there I don't know if you can see it or not there it is you can kind of see it I'll glue those down and then uh, I'm gonna sand them in so more than likely uh, I'm not gonna show you gluing it down because that's that's pretty basic stuff um, but I will show a little bit of the sanding it in so give me a second I'll get the video rearranged and we'll get on with it well I got the uh, right side sanded and glued down and I'd lead my T-bar sander on here and just kind of went at it, roughed it in. It's not going to be real smooth when you're done. You know, with the sailing, sanding, there's going to be little divots or it could be holes and stuff. And like I've been saying, uh, don't worry about the, the cracks, the holes, the dents, the gouges, because that gets filled in later. All right. There's the other block sits right in here uh, the angle was wrong on this one so there's a little gap in the center and I really don't care if there's a gap there if I need to I'll just shove a piece of scrap something in between and sand that flush so no big deal and on with the left side all I do is strike a mark with a pencil well try to find one that writes there we go, must have glue on the other one. And that gives me a mark. I don't know if you can see that mark. I keep looking in the monitor to see if uh, things are visible, but it's not helping me none. What we have to do is basically just sand this corner off and get, get the shape roughed in before I smooth it out while it's on the wing. So that's just a matter of grinding it down with 80 grit sandpaper. This is just that wingtip block material. It's fairly simple to sand. Okay, I'm getting there. Now I have to see how much I have to take off the top quite a bit. So what I'm going to do is just taper it from this line to the very back bottom edge of the fillet. And I'll start with the back bottom edge and bring that down to a sharp point. And then I'll bring these edges round. And something like that. It's getting close. Now I have to finish around the front top. Might have to do that on the wing because there's not much room to grip. And if I grip it too tight, I'm going to snap the wood in half and then it'll be a mess. I'll have to start over with another block. I don't want that to happen, so Let's see what we got here. Well, she sticks up quite a ways. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I'm going to mark a line here and rescore this line. So you can see how much I have to take off. It's a good eighth of an inch right at, at this hump. 
Now I'll go real quick. It's only an eighth of an inch on super soft balsa with 80 grit sandpaper and it goes fast. All right, let's see what I got. Still a little high up in here. And that can be lowered by the sanding bar if I want. This seems to be going pretty good. But I think I'm going to take it down a little more with the 80 grit. Just a little bit more on this one edge. Looks pretty good. Not quite the way I would like it. Not quite the shape I'm looking for. That's, that's a little better. Well, take some loose 220 here and level her off just a bit so I can see what I got. And I think that's acceptable. Like I said, when I patch it all up with the uh, polyester resin and microloon, it'll be perfect. I'll get my medium gap filling CA. Ooh, I made a mess on the bottle or something. I'm sticking to my bottle. And what am I out? No, nope, it's just taking its time getting to the bottom. And I'll load this up pretty good. Because there's going to be a lot of vacant spots underneath this block. So this is not sanded perfectly. And drop her into place. Push her down, squish her down, grab a paper towel. Kind of wipe up the excess glue. And that's it. Fillets are in. I think that's just about as far as we can go for now. I'm going to let all this stuff dry. And when we come back, we're going to deal with the retracts. Get this cut out. And then we will uh, go on to the next step. So until next time, have a good one.